We're back. We're live. It's Monday, 1 uh, p.m. It's uh, 1 o'clock rock here at uh, Research in Manoa. And our special guest is uh, Ali El Khadi, uh, president of hydrology, that's water science, Department of Geology and Geophysics, School of Ocean Earth Science and Technology, that's SOEST. And he is also the as associate director of the Water Ro Resources Research Center, uh, which is actually located in Holmes Hall, the engineering building at the University of Hawaii at Manoa. Welcome to the show, Ali. Thanks, Jade. Glad to be here. Nice to have you. Uh, and we're talking today about uh, Hawaii's water resources, hyphen drying up, question mark? Are that's, they drying up? That's one way to think about it. <laughs> 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 I think so far we are okay. But if the climate continues to change the way that is expected, and we are not careful about saving and conserving water, we might be in big trouble. So uh, Hawaii is a special environment, special ecology for so many things. Mm -hmm. And I guess that means it's also special for water. Now, this would be different than um, other places, right? Mm -hmm. uh, first, we are an island or a group of islands, and we have limited resources. So basically what you have is what you get, or vice versa, what you get is what you have. And uh, basically we cannot import water from outside, obviously. Uh, we have a special kind of geology and a special type of uh, features that's very different from the mainland continental systems. Uh, having a small watersheds is the main issue here. That means that the, the mountains may be tall, but they're limited in size. That's exactly the case and very steep. <coughs> that means you can have uh, uh, serious floods sometimes, very small warming time. Uh, you have less infiltration because of that. The water runs quickly and escapes to the ocean. Mm -hmm. uh, we have the aquifers, which is a geologic formation where water is stored, is very porous and very high conductance. So that means uh, any changes can affect the storage of water. Mm. Basically, we have to be uh, uh, aware of the conditions, which include also uh, variability of uh, information. Basically, it's very complicated, it's very hard to study, that differentiate it from other areas as well. Yeah. You said we have to save water, but it's not just that we have to save water today, mm -hmm. it's we always have to save water. We have to use less water, isn't that, isn't that what you're saying? We have to. Uh, I can maybe surprise you, Jay, by giving you some numbers. Uh, each time you open the faucet, each one minute, cost you between one and five gallons of water. So if someone is taking a long shower, they'll, uh, how many minutes, 30 minutes, that's 150 gallons. Yeah. If you use one of these large yeah. uh, uh, head showers or shower heads. Uh, in the average, we use in this country about between 60 and 80 gallons a day. Per person? Per person. Uh, but people in poor water countries, they can survive on five gallons a day. Because they have to. They have to. Yeah. Unfortunately, we don't have to. We're lucky. Each yeah. time we open the faucet, there is water, and there, there is, is no reason to panic. So, and it's cheap. You were telling me before the show that a gallon of water in Hawaii costs uh, one tenth of one cent. Mm -hmm. That's not expensive. <laughs> no, no. And uh, water actually is free. But uh, you pay for the actual cost to mm -hmm. get it from the ground and send it to your house. Yeah, yeah. How's the quality in Hawaii? I mean, we've had issues at uh, Red Hill and all that, mm -hmm. but in general, how's the quality? It's, it's, uh, quality is good. Uh, usually people will stop me to ask me when they know I'm a hydrologist. I say <laughs> I drink the faucet water. <laughs> <laughs> Do you? Yeah. Okay. And actually, might be surprised to some that some of the bottled water are not of good quality. <laughs> is that right? That's you true. heard it here on ThinkTech. <laughs> <laughs> We're not saying which bottled water, <laughs> but some of it isn't as good as the faucet. Yeah, you know why? Because there is no federal regulations for bottled water. So if you make it in California, you have to satisfy California regulations, but yeah. you can sell it in Hawaii without any regulations. Yeah. Ah, just right out of the tap or worse. Mm -hmm. So what about fluoride and that kind of additives? Do we have anything like that going on in Hawaii? Uh, I believe we do have that. I think they were asking about the waiver, but I don't know really what happens. Yeah, yeah. That doesn't work. Yeah. So um, 
there's undoubtedly a dynamic here, mm -hmm. and I'd like to get your ha a handle from you on exactly what affects the availability and possibly the, the quality of water. Mm -hmm. uh, so rainfall would affect it, and if climate change is changing rainfall, then climate change is going to affect it. Mm -hmm. And of course, uh, we talked briefly before the show about uh, damage to the lenses, right. uh, to the aquifers. Mm -hmm. uh, could you talk about what kinds of things are threatening our water supply? Mm -hmm. Actually, if we could see yeah, let's, the let's see your slides. first figure, that's on. So here is the cross-section of the island of Oahu that give you some idea about the geology of the area. So you can see uh, the ocean on one side, you see the leeward side there, and the windward side. The yellow part to your right is the cup rock, that's what I was talking about. Cup rock is basically a marine uh, sediment mm -hmm. and uh, some uh, sedimentary sediment. Mm -hmm. that have lower, what we call lower conductivity. <coughs> conductivity is expression of ability of the water to move. High conductivity means water move fast. Low conductivity means it will move slower. So Caprock, if you want to research this, is spelled C-A-P-R-O-C-K, Caprock. Right. I think it has an E after the P, but it doesn't. <laughs> or it doesn't. <laughs> yeah. So basically, when I mentioned that before the show, any time you break the cab rock is bad mm. because it's cabbing the good water. Okay? Mm. So when you break it, the good water will escape. Uh. That's number one. Number two, the cab rock is useful because chemicals, bad chemicals, will not go down. Okay? Yeah. So it is protecting the good water below yeah. that. So if you, if you break the cap rock, then bad things could go into the fresh water? Uh, most likely not because the pressure, what we call pressure, uh, that's not exactly the word, is higher in the in the oh. basalt, so water will move up. Okay, okay. so you just lose it. You, you lose, lose it the water. It easier. goes into the sea water. You lose it easier, and so water will go in ah, further. Okay, yeah. yeah. So and that and that that would have a, a detrimental effect on the lens, and therefore on the uh, aquifer in general. Right, right. Yeah. That's one of the factor. But uh, if you look also at the picture here, you see the uh, freshwater lens looks uh, like a lens like that. Can mm -hmm. you see it? Fresh water, the blue, mm -hmm. above the red. The red in the bottom, the dots, the dot red, mm -hmm. is salt water. Can okay. you see that? And the, the lens is between the fresh water and the salt water. It's called, no, no, the, the, the fresh water is a lens. Ah, okay. But there is a mixing zone between the two. Can you see it? Yes. The mixing zone, which is brackish water. Yes, uh, brackish. What right. is, is, that the, is that the lens? Or, no, the lens, uh, is the blue. It is more like uh, eyeglasses lens. Yeah. That's why I call it that lens. Yeah, okay. So the freshwater lens floats on the top of the salt water uh, okay. because of density. So light okay. over heavier water. Yeah. Mixing is because salt water will mix with water. So that causes it to mix. And if you use too much water, the lens will shrink. The blue will shrink yeah. and the red will creep in. And the mixing or brackish will increase. Yeah. So in the old days, we have much thicker lens. But because we use too much, then we are uh, losing the lens. Okay, can and you replace lens, it? Can you re it? It has restore to rain, it? rain. <laughs> rain, rain. Okay. But also if you use artificial recharge, you know, like, you know, like in the future, hopefully, it will be safe to recharge with uh, recycled water. So that will be useful, like, uh, that will push it down. Well, let's talk about recycled water. Okay. What is that? Recycled water, uh, actually in Hawaii here, we generate lots of wastewater as you can expect. The island of Oahu generates about 100 million gallons of wastewater, if I remember correctly. What we do is get rid of it in three different ways. One, throw it deep in the ocean using what we call outfalls, it's like two miles out. Then the other way is to uh, deep inject it in wells, in the brackish, remember the brackish, mm -hmm, or salt mm -hmm. water. Below the fresh. Below yeah. the fresh. And hope it will not do some damage. The third method That's is... That's not desirable then. No. Yeah, yeah because then it could do some damage. It, could, could, it has. It could, it could come up into it, the fresh water. Yeah. It has, yes. And the third method is septic system, which is like cesspools or uh, septic tanks. 
cesspools are very bad because they are like just a hole in the ground. Yeah. So and it, it, it leaches everywhere. Right. So yeah. it's actually when it is cl close to the ocean, it's really bad because it has to have enough space to do some treatment, natural treatment. But when it is near the ocean, there is no enough space. It is more like disposing to the... Uh, so to what's your, your uh, recommended solution? The recommended solution, people call it rather than waste water, people call it water wasted. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So they are trying to treat it, and there is still some uh, issue there. The cost is an issue. The transportation is an issue because the waste treatment facility is far from where you need it. But they use it for uh, limited use. Golf like courses. Golf courses, and you could use it for agriculture when you don't have leaves, when the plants don't have leaves. Uh, so you can use it over these. Yeah. And they do some study to make sure it doesn't go down to the lens so yeah. to be safe. So how do, you, how do you process it in order to make it drinkable? Uh, it's different states, and this is outside my area. <laughs> but basically, you remove the chemicals, like nutrients, like phosphorus and uh, nitrogen. Which are bad for people. Right, because too much of it removes salinity. But yeah. first, you, you, you kill the bacteria and viruses. That's the first step. And there is different degrees. There is uh, uh, R1 water, R2 water, and R3 water. R3 is like fresh water, like faucet water. But it's very expensive because it has to go through many processes. Yeah, much more expensive than one tenth a cent per gallon. Yeah. Certainly. Yeah. And and of course, if you can't do this and you're short of water, then your option, major option, mm -hmm. uh, would be a desalination, right. which is way more expensive than processed right. uh, water. I, I guess it's I don't know the relative cost, but both of them are much certainly much yeah. more expensive than. Well, San than Diego that. put in a big desalinization plant. And it costs billions. Yes. I believe uh, Orange County, they have that, and California in general. Yeah. And uh, the people of California had this droughts in the 80s, 90s, and they learned their lessons, so they were careful. Yeah. Unfortunately, humans forget very quickly. So yes. once, is, uh, <laughs> once the drought is gone, we go back to normal. <laughs> Hopefully, we won't. Yeah, we should. That's uh, Ali El Khadi. A pr professor of hydrology, Department of Geology and Geophysics in Seoul West, and also associate director of the Water Resources Research Center at UH Manoa. We'll take a short break, come back and see a bunch more of these slides so you can understand what is happening in Oahu and elsewhere around the state. We'll be right back. Aloha! This is Rez McJackal. The University of Hawaii football team under Rolovich is going to get wet this season. In case you didn't understand me, University of Hawaii football team is going to kick butt under Rolovich this season. So be sure to follow us on Think Tech Hawaii and Hibachi Top. I'll be at every game. And remember, aloha! Aloha, my name is Justine Espiritu, and I am the co-host of Hawaii Farmers Series. This is my co-host, Matthew Johnson, and we are live with you every Thursday at 4 p.m. at thinktechhawaii.com. And our show focuses on Hawaii's local food uh, community. We feature not only the farmers that are producing our food, but we also feature the supporters and other folks involved in the community that are trying to promote local agriculture. <laughs> okay, we're back, we're live. We're here with Ali El Kadi, president of hydrology. Uh, excuse me, professor, president, eh? <laughs> professor of hydrology <laughs> and associate director of the Water Resources Research Center at UH Manoa. Mm -hmm. So we have some slides. Let's take a, a whiz through these slides and learn more about water in Hawaii. Okay. What we see now is a chart for water expected uh, increase in water use in uh, Hawaii, especially Oahu. And that chart is made by the Board of Water Supply, which should deliver water to your house. And you can see the trend. If we are for, uh, you know, uh, lucky enough, we should use uh, or expect to use or increase about one million gallons a day per year. Okay? That's what the blue line is. Mm -hmm. The yellow line is not good. So hopefully we are conserving. As you can see, is a blue shade. There is, it's leveling off there, right? 
uh, starting maybe in 1991, mm -hmm. it is kind of leveling off. So hopefully we are conserving, you know. Well, so when you, you do planning, you should use this in mind. Yes, but uh, part of that, uh, as we discussed, uh, <laughs> could be a c computer algorithm to determine the price. If we want to uh, change customer behavior, consumer behavior, then we raise the water, the cost per <coughs> gallon, or lower it as, as, uh, as the supplies exist. Wouldn't that be a way of uh, con uh, saving water? Right. If it's, uh, but this is nature of humans. Things are expensive. <laughs> they are forced to. But uh, I think they have some kind of a structure now. Mm -hmm. But I don't think it is still enough to make sure that people really conserve. Yeah. 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 Well, there's plenty of room because it's so cheap now. Right. So if we made it expensive, people would take note and they would use less. Mm -hmm. Okay. How about the next slide? The next slide uh, talks about uh, on-site uh, disposal systems, which is like septic systems, and that includes cesspools and uh, septic systems. And they uh, can be surprised to know that we have more than 100,000 units in Hawaii, and they release uh, average or about 70 million gallons a day of minimally treated wastewater. It's not really R3, it just has partial treatment and it can reach the ocean. And it can incre increase uh, nitrogen in the ground, which is, is bad. Like if you have borderline water quality, then you still have leaching that can uh, make it bad. So but we should have done something about this a long time ago. We should have, you, you have a picture of the Big Island, of course, because there are a lot of septic systems on the Big Island. No, yeah, but this one is about Kauai, but it's very similar. Oh, Kauai, sorry. Kauai. It's very similar. You see, in that picture here shows the density of uh, systems, septic systems. The red is large, like I think about, what, 500 units per square miles? This is huge, right? And can you tell where they are located, uh, Jay? Sure, around, uh, well, on the, they're on the water. Is that good? <laughs> no, they're going to get right into the um, right. water sources and right. the ocean. Right, and what else? What happens if sea level rises? comes right back up on you. Mm -hmm. So that yeah. would be really sad. It affects your drinking water. Right, and it will wash it, uh, even make it worse oh, and wash it. Terrible. Wash. So the solution is, because this is like roller area, you cannot really connect all of them to, uh, to sewer. So why don't we spend the money and make regular plumbing? It will be expensive, very expensive, because yeah. roller area, uh, you have to have long lines. Yeah. And it, you cannot have really uh, economic way to do that. Yeah. But now they have... Uh, system where you can do local systems, so just for per community. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. hopefully that will yeah, that's be... Yeah, that's not like it would work. Right, yeah. right. You know, I mean, in that map, between the dark areas, there, uh, you know, one dark area and another, there's long pipelines, mm -hmm. but if you didn't have to make those long pipelines, if you only did it in the concentration of the dark area, right. it would be a lot less expensive. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And uh, now it has just to be more economically visible, that's uh, yeah. criteria. Okay, here's another one now. Okay, this is a study done by the USGS, uh, United States Geological Survey here in uh, Hawaii, mm -hmm. and it shows the decline in stream discharge. The water runs in the stream. Mm -hmm. As you can see, the red line means decline over the years. That's called the base flow, meaning water coming from the aquifers why, to the why stream. Why is it declining? That's a sign of climate change. Not enough rainfall. Right. So there is not enough rainfall. It's nothing it goes into the ground as it used to. Then the water, less water goes to the streams. You know, Ali, I had the impression that when the plantations were operating and they built all those uh, ditches, mm -hmm. you know, to run water for agricultural purposes, they were careful and they maintained the ditches and the, the ditches were a positive effect on water. Mm -hmm. But now there are no plantations, the ditches are not being maintained. Mm -hmm. um, does this have any effect on the uh, drinking water supplies? Uh, actually, we call it return flow, water return or return water that goes down. What happens is uh, one third of irrigation water goes down back to the aquifer. Yeah. So when you have urbanization, yeah remove the plantations, that means there is no water goes down. Yeah. Like other plain, that used to be agriculture. Yeah. So now there is no fresh water goes down. Yeah. So uh, agriculture has some advantages, 
you know, because you have to irrigate anyway, so yeah. it could be using too much water. Yeah. But if you use like economic uh, way or more uh, like uh, recent or advanced irrigation system, you could minimize uh, losses and use yeah, less yeah. water. So the loss is not great. So uh, it, it's better not to lose the water. Right. right. So you can compromise. You know, you don't have to uh, urbanize and in the same time use less water for irrigation. Well, that seems to be a, you know, a point here that as the state urbanizes, mm -hmm. we, we need to spend money on systems that will you know, upgrade our water system. We have to do that. If we, mm -hmm. if we leave our water system back at a time when everything was country, mm -hmm. then we're gonna lose, we're gonna lose. Right. So we need to spend a little money to keep the water system up with the urbanization. Right, it is, there is some um, new uh, technology uh, to try to still benefit and not waste water and minimize the runoff. Remember, runoff is a bad thing, it goes to the ocean. Yeah, yeah. So if you have asphalt and buildings, that's all goes to the ocean. Yeah. So what they do is like use uh, on roof gardens. They use like uh, driveways, which has uh, mm. uh, grass, mm. you know, half grass, half blocks, mm -hmm. uh, recirculate water. So you can try to lessen the damage. But so you can do that if your architect and engineer help you with it. Right. That. There is uh, actually in, in, in some unit in the you know, in University of Hawaii, they have units that study that. They try to optimize the process so you don't lose yeah. the, or yeah. destroy nature. Yeah. yeah. We're going to get more sensitive to this as the price of water goes up. Yes, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't we go to the next one? Okay. Well, what is this? Flooding in the North Shore. That was, I believe, uh, I think 2008. I remember we had a, a workshop there teaching about the environment. Then we were there. That was the next day to the, or a few days after that flooding. So people were terrified and they changed the subject of the workshop to flooding. <laughs> So as you can imagine, this is horrible. And you can see, uh, you know, with, um, uh, with climate change, you could have more of that, more flooding. And also see the chocolate color, right? That's, That's uh, not a good color. No, no, this uh, sediment that yeah. washes off. Yeah. So you are losing the good soil yeah. to the ocean Bad and damaging the ocean as well. Now, are there antigens in that water? The antigens, bacteria, b b virus, yeah, all certainly. that? Yeah, if, especially in a septic system, they will wash yeah. all of them. Yeah. Okay, what about next? This is uh, Hanalei in uh, Kauai. I think this is, should be shown after the other one, like before and after. Can you s go back to the previous one? No, there is oh. this one here. Oh. This is before. <laughs> this is oh. before. Wow. And now, this is after. What a wreck. Right, so you can see, you know, it's flooding is very serious. And uh, in some cases, the frequency will increase because of climate change. So you have extreme cases. You have uh, more flooding, you have more drought. That's one That's sign climate of change. change yeah. It's harder work to keep everything balanced that way. That's true. What have we got? This is another uh, flooding problem, and this time in Manoa. This, this is Hamilton is, Library, huh? This is the Hamilton Library, and to the bottom left, you see the uh, basement. And that was unfortunate because they had all the valuables in the basement, and the Hamilton Library is in the lowest point on campus. And the basement is the lowest point in the building. <laughs> and they put the more valuable historic documents there oh, and the no. computers. Oh, no. And this would be huge damage. And Did you, you lose see, any of your research papers? Not my personal. Okay. No. Okay. <laughs> Fortunately, I have things uh, stored on computer. No. And actually, the, there was also a picture of damage happened to Manoa buildings, like you see the cars there. Yeah. But Manoa. Uh, residential area, so they had, I think, $100 million in one night, that's yeah, what's yeah. the oh. yeah. And the university can hardly afford that kind of damage. Right. Right. What we got here? Okay, uh, now science will come to play. Uh, as I mentioned, climate change is something that's happening. So what to do about it? And you have lots of issues. Uh, you cannot wait until it happens, right? 
So we do something called uh, modeling, basically use simulation models to try to predict what happens in the future. So uh, it will be easy to do, relatively speaking, than wait until it happens and think about it. Like for example, uh, I wanna know what happens if uh, rainfall decrease. Then I can do simulations, you know, make believe and yeah. see how it looks. It, it, in principle, it should be straightforward, but there is lots of difficulties I will talk about in a second. So what happens here, we create something called the conceptual model, which is our understanding of reality. Say, I wanna see what happens to the island of Oahu. I need to study all the natural processes that I can simulate, okay? So that's very subjective, right? Because especially underground, we cannot really understand what's happening down there. And uh, basically, I collect all the information and then build my conceptual model. And I call it conceptual model because it is mine, could be different from yours, yeah. from his, yeah. because it is my understanding of the system. Yes. And we need to collect enough data to validate that. Yes. So if you look here at the picture, the left side is geology. Okay, and this is just a superficial geology, means what we've seen from the surface. Mm -hmm. So below that is not exactly the same, but that gives you some idea about different material, like basalt, like sediment, like whatever. So all of that is uh, well uh, known, at least in, in, that, um, in what we understand for it, right? But you need deeper formulations that you deep use deeper techniques to look under these. But let us assume that we know that. So the arrow shows to the right, shows that we convert it to areas. And each area is comprised of one material or whatever. So you converted the geology to different areas and assign different material to that. So if you have basalt, assign high conductivity. If you have sediment, assign low conductivity, okay? If you have what we call dikes, then it would be combined of uh, High, uh, low conductivity. Are dikes in our future? Dikes. Yeah. Well, they are already. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> they are in our past. Uh, okay. Well, I guess we, we had them way back when, too, yeah. I suppose. It is the way uh, lava cooled off. So they are den dense. They have no, basically, virtually no conductivity. And they extend like this, isolating the lava. So water will be retarded uh, and lava dikes. Between. Okay. Right. So looking forward, we only have a, a, a few seconds left. Okay. Uh, what are we going to have to do to preserve our water supply at a reasonable price going forward? And how mm -hmm. soon do we have to do it? I, I think we started, as uh, I think I mentioned to you, maybe in my email, the University of Hawaii got a new grant, a nice large grant, $20 million mm -hmm. from the uh, National Science Foundation. Congratulations. Uh, thanks. It's called EBSCOR. And that one stands for, uh, I guess, um, it's called uh, Experimental Program to Stimulate uh, com Competitive Research. Mm -hmm. And we're doing lots of work about water, especially about water. So that's basically, basically we'll try to resolve the missing issues. Like I mentioned, we don't understand the processes, so we'll try to collect data and do modeling and use sophisticated techniques, non-intrusive techniques to look into underground. Hopefully that's the way to go. A study, a study, a study, collect data and refine your understanding and the way to predict. Then um, once you know the, how to manage your resources, you will learn how to conserve water and create new resources and hopefully it will not be at uh, loss. And maybe do some earth moving? Certainly will. Yeah, ooh. <laughs> okay, our future is gonna require some attention. So happy that you're working on this because water is one of the great resources of the world and it's going to be more important going forward, including for Hawaii. I'm um, glad to, um, uh, that my area is very beneficial. Yeah. That's uh, Ali El Khadi, President, <laughs> Professor <laughs> of Hydrology, <laughs> Department of Geology and Geophysics, School of Ocean Earth Science and Technology at SOWEST, and he is the Assistant Director of the Water Resources Research Center, University of Hawaii. Thank you so much. Thank you.